Because sometimes one movie just isn't enough, some films dare to tease another work of cinema inside of themselves. The movie within a movie gambit has primarily allowed filmmakers to poke fun at the industry, themselves, audiences, or all of the above. And while most of these films within films are mere throwaway jokes about how terrible they'd probably be in real life, every so often a fake movie emerges that audiences would actually love to watch. And so, with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture, here with 10 movies within movies everyone wanted to see. Number 10. Angels with Filthy Souls in Home Alone is there any better testament to a film within a film's quality than most people believing it to be an actual real movie? For younger viewers in particular, this was certainly the case with Home Alone's Angels with Filthy Souls, an apparently decades-old black-and-white gangster film memorably watched by Kevin McAllister while left to his own devices during the movie. There isn't a person alive who's seen Home Alone and doesn't remember Johnny pumping snakes with a hail of lead before savagely quipping, Keep the change, you filthy animal. It just isn't possible. But of course, the scene was shot specifically for Home Alone as a parody of the 1938 crime film Angels with Dirty Faces, with director Chris Columbus even going to the trouble of shooting it on black and white negative film that would help give it a period accurate look. It certainly looks like an absolute blast, enough that Home Alone 2 rehashed the gag to still amusing effect with the sequel Angels with Even Filthier Souls. Between the deliciously hard boiled dialogue and Ralph Foodie's glorious scenery chewing performance as Johnny, what's not to like? Number 9. All the Jump Street sequels in 22 Jump Street 22 Jump Street concludes with one of the greatest credits gags in cinema history, as after spending a large chunk of the movie mocking its own unnecessary existence, this sequel teases a glut of ridiculous possible sequels throughout the final credits roll. Complete with mock-up posters and even clips from the movies themselves, we're shown literally dozens of spin-offs and sequels, going all the way from 23 Jump Street to the sci-fi jaunt 2121 Jump Street. Even more hilariously, Seth Rogen Rogan shows up to replace Jonah Hill for one of the films due to a contract dispute. But considering how absurdly entertaining both Jump Street movies are, fans would have gladly thrown down their cash to see any one of these proposed films, if not all of them. And yet these joke sequels are all somehow slightly less ridiculous than the Jump Street slash Men in Black crossover film that very nearly did get made. Number 8. Thanksgiving in Grindhouse Arguably the best part of Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez's B-movie double feature Grindhouse was the abundance of fake trailers inserted throughout the two films, as directed by the likes of Rob Zombie, Edgar Wright and Eli Roth. Roth's contribution was a trailer for Thanksgiving, a seasonally themed slasher film in the vein of John Carpenter's Halloween, focused on a knife-wielding killer dressed as a pilgrim slaughtering the unsuspecting residents of a sleepy town during the holiday. The ominous synths, familiar POV, POV shots, creepy voiceover, you'll come home for the holidays in a body bag, and wealth of ultra-violence made a persuasive argument that Thanksgiving would actually be a feature film well worth watching. Sadly, despite several of Grindhouse's fake trailers actually turning into movies such as Machete and Hobo with a Shotgun, Roth's attempts to develop Thanksgiving into a feature-length film haven't panned out. Number 7. Fake Purse Ninjas in Bowfinger as much as we'd all love to see Bowfinger's focal fake sci-fi film Chubby Rain, the very end of the movie teases one better, a martial arts romp starring everybody who worked on Chubby Rain called Fake Purse Ninjas. The trailer touts it as an homage slash parody of classic martial arts films like Enter the Dragon, as Jif Ramsey and Bobby Bowfinger team up to raid a warehouse full of ninjas, making counterfeit purses. Yep. In addition to rescuing the beautiful blonde the ninjas have kidnapped, the duo are seen fighting their way through a bevy of dubiously attired goons with the worst fight choreography this side of Star Trek's infamous Gorn episode. But it sure as hell looks fun, visible camera crew be damned, topped off by a surprise appearance from Christine Baranski as a culturally insensitive ninja warlord touting in practically long fingernails. From the title on up, this one sells itself. 
Number 6. Batman vs. E.T. in Chippendale Rescue Rangers Chippendale Rescue Rangers is perhaps one of the most meta movies ever made, and certainly the most fourth wall breaking piece of cinema released in 2022. Among the dozens, if not hundreds, of winks at the audience throughout its runtime are two separate references to a hugely unexpected crossover movie that exists within the Chippendale universe. Batman vs. E.T. When a sullen chip is walking down the street, an atrocious poster for the film is visible. And then to do one better, later in the movie we're shown a clip of Batman vs. E.T. itself where a dying E.T. tells Batman, E.T. forgive Bat. Obviously this is making fun of Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice and the silliness of vs movies in general, but on a broader level it's gloriously skewering Hollywood's insatiable commitment to wringing a buck from its IP. And yet who among us wouldn't watch this movie if it were actually commercially available? Terrible Batman voice and all. Number 5. Cock Puncher in The Onion Movie the Onion movie may be an incredibly hit and miss comedy, but it at least kicks off in fitting fashion with a fake trailer for a new Steven Seagal starring action flick called Cock Puncher. The trailer takes the guise of a seemingly conventional martial arts movie in which a young warrior is brutally beaten by gangsters who repeatedly punch him in the crotch. The man asks his master to teach him the ancient technique in question, at which point a training montage transitions us to 32 years later where the young martial artist is now a middle-aged man played by Seagal. Set to a hilariously stereotypical trailer guy voice, we're introduced to Seagal's cock puncher via an action montage in which he punches an inordinate number of bad guys right in the dick before quipping, I don't think you have the balls. It would have been infinitely more entertaining than the generic straight-to-video action slop he's been releasing for the better part of 20 years now, anyway. Number 4. Stab 5 in Scream 4 It's clearly implied throughout the Scream franchise that the Stab movies are pretty tawdry cash-ins on a real-life tragedy, and as amusing as they do mostly seem, there's one mentioned in Scream 4 that absolutely takes the cake. During the movie's almost overwhelmingly meta pre-title sequence, we end up meeting high schoolers Jenny and Marnie who were watching Stab 7 while discussing the state of the series. At this point, Stab mega-fan Jenny explains to her her less than enthusiastic pal that only the original three Stab movies are based on Sidney Prescott's experiences, as she threatened to sue them if they kept producing horror films based on her life. Jenny then casually mentions that Stab 5 has time travel before adding that it's by far the worst and that the series went off the rails by this point. It's effectively a parody of patently ridiculous slasher sequels like the space set Jason X and how desperate horror franchises can get to keep audiences interested. And while we sat Sadly, haven't seen a single frame of Stab 5 in any of the Scream films, it certainly sounds delightfully unhinged. Fans have speculated that the plot could involve Ghostface going back in time to wipe out one of Sydney's ancestors, Terminator style, which is actually kind of awesome. Number 3. Blunt Man and Chronic in Jane Silent Bob Strike Back Who among us doesn't love a good old fashioned train wreck? and by all the evidence presented in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, the Blunt Man and Chronic movie would have made Morbius look like the Dark Knight. Throughout Kevin Smith's meta-comedy, we're given an extensive look at the campy superhero movie's production, all while Jay and Silent Bob, who the characters are based on, try to stop it from getting made for fear it will ruin their good reputations. Blunt Man and Chronic is directed by extremely uppity filmmaker Chaka Luther King, and sees Jason Biggs and James Van Der Beek playing the title characters, while Mark Hamill portrays the villainous cock knocker. Yet Jay and Silent Bob's efforts to sabotage the production inadvertently result in them ending up in the movie themselves as stand-ins for Biggs and Van Der Beek in some scenes. Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back ends with the movie's premiere, and though we don't see any completed footage from the film itself, the reactions from the exiting moviegoers says it all. Randall calls it worse than Clash of the Titans, while Dante complains that he was played by Judy Dench, Alyssa resolves that it was at least better than Mallrats, and Hooper X calls it a 90 minute long gay joke before comparing it to Batman and Robin. Say no more, we're in. Number 2. Schwarzenegger's Hamlet in Last Action Hero 
people finally seem to be coming round to the idea that Last Action Hero is actually a brilliant action comedy that was incredibly ahead of its time and yet unfortunate enough to be released just a week after Jurassic Park. This howlingly funny Hollywood takedown features arguably the single best fake trailer in the history of cinema. Early in the movie, Arnie's biggest fan, young Danny Madigan, is being forced to watch Laurence Olivier's considerably drier 1948 Hamlet adaptation when he starts to imagine a more action-packed version starring his favourite action star. In Danny's testosterone fueled reboot, Arnie chomps on a cigar before throwing Claudius out of a window, mows the bald guys down with both swords and a damn machine gun, and then blows up the castle to holy hell on his way out the door. While on one hand the scene is clearly making fun of Hollywood's tendency to shove their most lucrative stars in everything, whether it suits them or not, this campy bombastic action film reinvention of Hamlet also looks like it'd be ludicrously entertaining in its own right. Number 1. Playback Time in Mr Bean's Holiday now, it still doesn't seem real that Willem Dafoe played a major supporting role in Mr. Bean's Holiday, as pretentious American filmmaker Carson Clay, who brings his new movie, Playback Time, to the Cannes Film Festival. The thing is, as a parody of self regarding art house cinema made for festival audiences and few others, it toes the line quite perfectly, whereby it manages to both make fun of its subject yet still seem like a genuinely interesting film. Yes, it's a card carrying vanity project for star director Clay. I mean, the opening titles name drop Clay's name four times, complete with languorous shots of him walking around and giving portentous voiceover monologues. But you know what? It's also genuinely beautifully shot, and Defoe's such a damn compelling actor that he can't help but make that silly, flowery prose actually seem pretty intriguing. Ultimately, Mr. Bean hijacks the screening and splices his own holiday footage into the movie. And once the crowd lords Clay's film as affectingly experimental, he decides to just roll with it rather than kick up a fuss. As hilarious as the whole send-up is, it's also something a lot of people would actually love to watch. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed something, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.